Hello and welcome to another drive-by code session. Uh, this is going to continue our series of uh, of the making a programming language series, uh, and this time we're going to make a code generator that spits out JavaScript. Uh, for, uh, let's review. So, uh, so this is how a programming language works. So this is prog lang programming language. In the first part of the series, we build a parser, uh, which we did that using nearly JS. And the job of the parser is to take the code that is written by someone using your programming language and spit out an AST, which we have done that in a previous episode. AST stand for abstract syntax tree and it is a true representation of what your code is but in a format that another programming another program I should say can understand so uh, you know in the previous episode we wrote such a program it was the evaluator uh, the evaluator took the AST and generated a result to your program, which in our very small math arithmetic program, it was to do some math calculation. Um, in this episode, we're gonna make a separate thing called the generator, which does not give you the result right away, but rather it gives you JavaScript code but the JavaScript code in reality is another box which can be executed and then that in turn will give you the result. So basically, instead of calculating the result directly using our code, our code is actually going to be a generator of some JavaScript which when executed will then yield the result. So that's the plan. Let's see it in practice. Again, uh, YKit wrote code. I'm going to replay what he wrote and explain what he did. So let's get into it. So first, he creates a generate.js script. And he's going to use our trusty MZ library and so that we can use async await style JavaScript to deal with the file system. And if you're interested in, in getting into more detail, learning more about how that works, I have made a video on using async await with Node.js. You can go find that on YouTube. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna make an async function. It's called main. And I'm gonna read in the content of the AST file. Uh, and the AST file looks like this to remind you. So this is the contents of the AST file. It's in JSON format. And so we're just gonna use the native JSON parser to parse it, and then we get our structure here. And then we're gonna pass that to a generate function, which has yet to be written, but it's coming soon. Uh, the job of this function is gonna be to generate this actual JavaScript code, which will be written to this file we call program.js. So just like that, and he's gonna put in a dummy placeholder generate function for now, just so that we can test this piece working. So let's see, he types node generate, but I don't think anything happened because he forgot to call the main function. So let's try that. And also have a little bit of printout to indicate stuff in that happened. So node generate, and now, uh, we have a program.js and and it will print out hello world and you can even execute it. So you write note program. He actually misspelled program. I think that's the replayer, the terminal recorder erroring out again. But anyway, so we have this program JS that's generated by this generate JS, but obviously that is not what we want it to be. We want it to, we want this program, the generated program to actually compute the this operation that's desired. 
uh, based on what we put in to the parser, which was that, that was the original input. If you look at, uh, well, yeah, that was our original input. And uh, so we wanted to actually compute the result of this computation. So how do we do that? Well, we actually, let's start simple. Let's start simple with just a number, one. And if we parse that, our AST file is gonna be just that, representing a number one. So let's try to get that generating into a JavaScript. So all we need really is a JavaScript program that prints out one. Um, so Wikit extracts a function, or maybe not extracts, but starts a new function, which will be, it's called generate expression, and it will be utilized inside of this generate function, uh, like so. So, and then the expression that it outputs will be a JavaScript expression, which is suitable for putting it inside as the argument of the console.log. Okay, so now all we have to do is to sort of basically translate this AST note here to the string one, more or less. And so that's easily done by saying if the type of the node is a number, we're just gonna return its value, that guy. So the one is gonna make its way out here and then the program, if we generate it again, is simply console.log1, we execute it, and then we just get one. Perfect. All right, now, what about one plus two? So if we parse one plus two, we'll get this operation, which is a composite object. It has a left-hand side and right-hand side, each of them are nodes, uh, number nodes. And so our generator now, has to give a JavaScript expression that is equivalent to this code here. So how are we gonna do this here? Well, first we need to test for the type, right? So let's test that to see that the type is operation. In the case that the node type is operation, we're gonna execute this generate expression function recursively on both the left and right hand side because both the left hand and right hand side are probably a number node or even yet another operation node and they will need to be converted um, to JavaScript. So once you execute this generate expression function, the result should be already in JavaScript form suitable for uh, concatenating with more JavaScript. Then we need the operator, which in the AST node that's up. So we'll just grab that and then we'll put the three things together into JavaScript. So assuming this is JavaScript, this is JavaScript, and this is JavaScript, we have a operation here in JavaScript. Let's try generating that. And that's exactly what we should get. And if we run the program, we get three. Okay, uh, what about multiply? Uh, we have a, sp a special multiply symbol in this arithmetic language. And I don't think that's gonna work so well. So if we did a generate parse and then generate with that, we get a invalid JavaScript syntax. So that's not gonna work. So what we need is a map to convert the operators in the arithmetic language to the operators in JavaScript. So we'll do that. So this multiplication symbol goes to the star symbol used in JavaScript for multiplication and the divide symbol goes to this slash symbol. So we generate again, now we get the correct JavaScript and that is able to run. Cool. Let's see if composite operations work first. So three plus two, the result of three plus two times, oh, this should be a multiplication symbol, I think we forgot to do that. So, okay, there we go. All right, so what is the resulting JavaScript 
to match this program. Well, it should look very close to that, right? It just, the, the multiplication symbol needs to change. Um, okay, so let's see if it works. If we do, if we do generate, we actually don't preserve the order of operations that the parentheses ha have ordered. So what we need to do is actually in the generate expression, if, if we have an operator like this, to be safe, we want to put parentheses around them, around the whole thing, so that, so this is an operation, we want to put parentheses around it, so that if it's combined with yet another operation, in this case, this one, uh, this will be done first. Um, and we get another extra set of parentheses here, but let's not worry about that. Um, this works, and that's all that matters. Okay, uh, we have composite operations working now, uh, and the next step is function calls. So let's write an expression with a function call here. We'll call the function pow, 2 to the 4th. And if we parsed it, then this is the this is the AST that we have. So we, on the right hand side of this multiplication, we have a function call expression or AST representation of the expression. And we'll need a converter in JavaScript for that as well. So again, we'll add an else if statement to detect the function call. And again, we'll have a sort of function name map. If you look at our list of functions, there are six of them. And for most of them, there's a direct uh, function in JavaScript that we can translate it to. So pow is math.pow, square root, sine, cosine, and absolute value. All of those have an equivalent function in JavaScript to support that translation. Uh, the only exception is square, which is we do just as the number of times itself. Uh, that's a special case. We're gonna handle that next. Okay, so, so we're gonna get the function name in JavaScript land by looking up the function name map and using the fun name in the AST here. And this fun name is the name of the function in our language. So we're gonna, again, map that into the function name in JavaScript. And then we're gonna call the function by that function name in JavaScript, but we need the argument. How do we get the argument? Well, for each argument, which in this array, each argument here is another AST node that's like this, right? So for each argument, this one, in this case, there are two. We actually need to send it through the generate expression function. To get some JavaScript. And we need to do that for both of them. So we're gonna use map to do that on all of the members of this array. And so for each arc, which is an AST node, we're gonna call ourselves, call the generate expression function again to get the JavaScript. So this guy yields us JavaScript. And then we're gonna, the map is gonna yield an array of JavaScript expressions. And then at the end, we're gonna join them together with a comma in between to generate the argument list suitable for putting inside of these parentheses, again, in JavaScript land. So let's see that, we're gonna generate that. And now we have this two and four as the argument list. And we have math.pow inside of this JavaScript expression, which should be runnable. Uh, okay, uh, did, did we even run this program? Let's try it. Node, uh, so the program.js looks like this, and we'll run node.program.js. There, 80, is that, is 80 correct? 16 times five is 80. Okay, 
All right, I'm bad at math. Okay, um, so next, we're going to need to handle this square case. So how are we going to handle this square case with the generator? Uh, I'm actually going to post this one as a challenge to you, the viewer. If you like, you can stop the video or pause the video and uh, come up with a solution for what what are we going to do to come up with a solution for this square function, which is not a direct function available in JavaScript. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds to decide to do that or not. Okay, if you did it, congratulations. You are getting the hang of this. Uh, or, or you're just a master at building code generators. Um, or if you just want to enjoy the show, um, well, there's actually multiple ways to do it. Um, the way that YKit chose is to just use an if statement in that case. So he said, if the function happens to be a square, if the function name happens to be square, he's actually gonna use a different way of generating the output. And otherwise, he'll use the way that he has programmed so far. But if it is a square function, it's gonna first, because the square function only has one argument. So the argument list, we expect it only to have one argument. So we'll we'll generate expression, convert that argument to JavaScript. And then we're gonna just render the result of the computation as argument times argument. So that works. Let's see that in action. Um, we'll go back to the replay terminal and I'm gonna generate this code again. And we have two times two, but we probably wanna put parentheses around this expression. So do that, and now we have parentheses. So we got square working now. Okay, uh, another possible way to support this is to actually make a function that returns the argument times itself, and then add that act sort of this custom function in the function name map. So that's another possible way to go about it. Um, and if you chose that, you are also correct. So that's where I want to stop. Uh, this is an example of a code generator. Um, and with this, we actually have like an end-to-end -end programming language. Uh, even though it's a very, very small programming language, it's only able to do some simple math arithmetic. But it gives you the end-to-end -end architecture of how the programming language is implemented and it this sort of serves as an example of that um, if you would like to go further uh, check out the fun programming language which i have i have on github uh, and i have done a video on this to give you a more proper introduction to it although there was a sort of a little fumble a little foul up in the video as you will see if you watch that video um okay that is it for now and uh i hope to see you later